It's what? not always the Fight Club, but I guess this is part of the Fight Club. Now, talking about the Fight Club, you've got Mike Lindell on one side and Rudy Giuliani on the other. They're, 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 they're trying to blow these guys up. They're trying to erase their presence in American society. And of course, it's good to have two fighters like Lindell and like Rudy, America's mayor. So, Rudy, you're now involved in this in this lawsuit. You actually are welcome, welcoming it. You're saying that will give you discovery. Obviously, it will work its way through the courts. There are other people saying they have no right to kind of sue you because it's all in the – in the uh, in the in the public process of hearings and 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 all that, just people want to know because we've got a lot to cover and not a lot of time. Uh, are you actively going to going to fight this lawsuit? <laughs> sure, I am. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to fight it on legal grounds, but I'll also show. Um, you know, I used to do defamation law for ten years for the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, the New York Daily News. It's kind of one of my specialties, so. Uh, so I get two defenses, right? Part of part of it, part of what they're saying is I I I profited because of my podcast and my radio show. So I'm a reporter. So Times Against Sullivan applies. They would have to show not only what, did I say something false, but I absolutely knew it was false. And then of course I have coverage as an attorney. And what I also have is about a thousand pages of documents. Uh, I'll have to call out the two or three hundred about Dominion, but I've already checked through it, and I have support for every single thing thing I said. Some of it comes out of congressional hearings. Some of it comes from Democrats. I mean, if we ever went to trial, which I doubt, I would call um, Carolyn Maloney, the Congress, my Congresswoman, who talks about. Um, one of the companies that Dominion bought that was a very very uh, what, what, questionable company. What is yeah, yeah, we don't need to go to you, friend. But would it help? Am I missing something? Would it help if this impeachment trial, and and kind of we're getting crickets on the right. You saw the impeachment trial last night, and, and guys saying it's not going to go anywhere. And clearly, Lindsey Graham's got this strategy of let's just get through it, get hammered, but have some vote on due process and move out. Wouldn't it? What isn't this the venue to actually put forward? Which I say is the low sure. hanging fruit. Remember, I've never really been a, a Dominion guy. I say it's your free option, but. You've got the low-hanging fruit that you showed in all the testimony you took at all these places around the country of the voter fraud and the, and the ballot fraud and all that. Then you've got all the things about the, the mail-in ballots. But even you could do the Dominion if you could you know, tie enough things they would consider evidence together. Wouldn't the sure. venue be the United States Senate? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be the Absolutely. best venue to I mean, actually make the president's case? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to play the uh, videotape from Coffee County, uh, Georgia, in which – one of the uh, election representatives shows you how the machine uh, actually couldn't cast a vote for uh, Trump until it cast four or five for Biden. And then, she, and then she shows you how you can manipulate the vote in the machine. It's their machine. It's all on tape. So I don't think Mike or I have much to worry about. Then we, of course, have a long report that was uh, submitted to the court in Antrim County in which 6,000 votes were changed. And 80% of the votes were sent off for adjudication, which means I went in, I voted. Nobody told me that eight out of ten times they would take my vote and somebody else would get to figure out if I actually voted for Trump or not, 80% of the time. So we got plenty of evidence. It would be nice if it came out first now, but if it doesn't, we'll get it out. And, and to go after his recovery network shows you what scoundrels they are, you know? These are really bad people, uh, uh, Steve. So, yeah. my last question: When you say when you say that you, we anticipate they're going to go after you, but wasn't the old days? I mean, you're a New York City guy. Wasn't it the New York Times with the Pentagon Papers and the Washington Post and Watergate? Did weren't they at the forefront of actually exposing all this type of stuff? And now they seem to have flipped. And the New York <laughs> Times has got a special Rudy team that every day they're beating up Rudy Giuliani. You know, every unless he's bleeding from everywhere, they're not happy. So how did the New York Times these things go from such uh, defenders of the people and getting exposing government secrets and all this stuff the government was doing to now being the guys going after the Mike Lindells and the Rudys because they got special watch teams just on you guys? Yeah, you know, I thought I was going to get uh, the New York Times Man of the Year award for uncovering the 30-year fraud of the Biden crime family. I mean, I am covered that. You got the, you got, you got, the, you got the runner up. You got the war room. You got the war room and National Pulse. You got the National know, Pulse and War Room. Time, Almost as prestigious. B- biggest, biggest, uh, biggest scandal of this century so far. 
and I uncovered it and, you know, millions and millions. And then who knows how much money from the Chinese Communist Party, 30 million, 40 million. I don't even know. Rudy, how can people uh, – you, your podcast is on fire. We, we're jammed. We've got to get to this GameStop short. Tell us, how do you get to your podcast? Because now do it, do it. the lawsuits the lawsuits made it the biggest thing in the world, right? Bigger than the war room. So how do you get to the podcast? You just go to rudyscommonsense.com, hit subscribe so you'll be there for good. You'll also cast a vote for free speech because they fool around on YouTube with it. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it isn't. Uh, so if you go to my if you go to my website, you can definitely get it. And um, actually, the one up there right now is about this fraudulent impeachment trial, which is totally ridiculous. They're removing they're removing a person who's already been removed. They, they what, also what, you have a daily show. You have a daily show on WABC three three to four o'clock every day on WABC. And you can get that online too. You get that on wabcradio.com. You can get it live all over the world. So we have WABC everywhere. You have the podcast comes out twice a week and go to uh, Wednesday the podcast. And Friday. Wednesday and Friday, and you've got and you've got. Uh, then can we get your Twitter parlor? These other aspects that people can follow you during the day. Yeah, and I'm on Twitter. You know, every day we wonder when we'll get taken off again. But <laughs> I don't really. I don't really. How is Trump really, Lindell? How is Trump Lindell and Bannon permanently banned? And, and you're still you're still up, Rudy. How's that work? What know. universe is that working? I, I must have some kind of connection I don't even know about. <laughs> I almost feel bad. I, you know, I'm Mayor a Giuliani, bad. America's mayor. You're you're <laughs> you're an American patriot, American hero, and you're loved, 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 not just by this audience, but by uh, at least half of the American people, sir. Well, it's great to be on the side of Mike Lindell. I admire that man so much for what he's gone through, and um, what they're doing to him is just outra- outrageous, outrageous. So un-American. Well, these people are not two peas good in Americans. Pod, trust me, Mayor Giuliani. Look forward to having you back on. So Thank spend you. More time. Thank you very much for joining us, man. See you soon. All right. Okay, I got. I got to go. To, we got Dan David. Dan David is known as the great, the smartest short when it comes to China. This guy's legendary about these phony Chinese companies and shorting them, making a lot of money for people that back him, but also exposing the corruption of American capital markets. We kind of jammed in here, Dan, and I apologize, but this thing is caught on, particularly in the popular side of these young fighters or these young young investors, I guess, against Wall Street's titans. Just explain to us what's going on in this in this the the great short of GameStop. Well, you're asking me about GameStop, but really, the, the greater picture here is this is about our, our failed monetary policy here in the United States that has been abysmal for decades, and the chickens have come home to roost. Uh, I don't feel bad for the shorts at all. These are savvy investors that should know what they're doing, and if they're getting crushed, good. That happens. But what we're seeing here with GameStop, look, something going up 1,700% in a week that has no fundamental change in their business is really not a good thing. Uh, It's a bubble. It's indicative of a bubble. And the Reddit army for... You know, you, you can root for them as the underdog. That's great. But it really is kind of an army led through ignorance. And I don't mean that pejoratively. I mean that factually. If you're not looking at fundamentals, then you're buying and gambling through ignorance. And this is going to end Okay, badly. hang on. But, uh, hey, Dan, I love you like a brother, but no offense. Yeah. All of Wall Street's turned into a casino. You can't pick on the Reddit army of being speculative when they've juiced this thing with Fed policy Right. The whole reason that the whole reason you got this speculative bubble is the titans of Wall Street and the hedge funds have made out like bandits. None of these companies, when you go back to Graham's fundamental analysis, the the great book on fundamental investing, that got thrown out years ago. This is it's Wall Street turned into a casino. So how do you how do you blame the poor guys that read it? Because I know I know that the institutional investors will in the end fare better. It's a rigged game. And I feel bad for the Reddit investors, right? I mean, it's a good day today. It's a good day last week. But this is going to be... Melvin Capital, Dan, Dan, my brother, Melvin Capital just lost $3.5 billion. They had to get bailed out by by, by Citadel. It's a $3.5 billion. And by the way, that is pension fund money. Every guy out there working on a lathe in some factory that your money's controlled by Melvin, you just got got a $3.5 billion gap in your pension fund, correct, sir? 
But those people running that fund will be fine. And the Reddit individuals that end up losing in the end will not be fine. They are my neighbors. They are my friends. They are my family. You know, I would like this to be a more educated place. Nobody's putting money in the bank anymore. It's all going in the stock market, and it's because you get no interest. Okay, hang on. I'm going to bring you back over the break. The re-